Digital phoropters give you uh, more control than than a manual does. For example, in, in axis, manuals are marked in five or two degree increments. You have to guess where one degree is. The digital goes right to one degree. Same thing with prism. You can do a prism at 0.5, at 0.2, at 0.1, whatever is appropriate for the case. The other thing it does is, is allows you to verify back and forth between two choices. It could be four lens changes and it's button push, or it could be just one lens change at a quarter diopter. It's the same process no matter what you're doing. So every choice takes the same amount of time. Well, I switched from manual to digital probably eight years ago. And in that time, you know, patients thought that that we redid the office in all kinds of ways. We repainted the place, we got new furniture. All we did is went from manual to digital and their perceptions of the practice soared. So it's from the marketing perspective, it was a phenomenal improvement. It also made me more effective with more uh, precise measurements in terms of prism power and, and axis down to one degree, which while we don't think it makes a big difference to most people, it actually does. Using the split prism to do a dual cross cylinder exam is, is beneficial in two basic ways. First, because the patient doesn't have to remember what number one looked like when they go to number two and back again. They have the simultaneous perception of the two choices. They can look back and forth, back and forth, back and forth and make a very good decision. It leads to a little more accuracy in the refractive data and it's much, much quicker. To set the patient up is quick and easy with the easer. Just have the patient press in with their forehead. The light indicator will go off. We, up here we have a bubble level that we can adjust uh, for level between the two eyes. And then we want to set up a PD. The indicators come in focus here. We can set her up right in the middle. If I need to adjust it, it's the knob on the controller will move it in and out. Very good. She's backed out a little bit, so we want to have her press in so that the light goes off. And then we want to check to see if she's at the appropriate vertex distance with this indicator. Okay, so initially we want to take her unaided acuities. So we hit the UA button here. There's no lenses in front of her, and she's looking through there with no correction. We would take her acuities and put them in a right eye or left eye. So let's say this is a right eye. She would give me an acuity. Um, I would dial it in here. Or if we were going letter by letter or line by line, the last line that I display will be captured as her acuity. And we can either go right eye, left eye with buttons, or we can touch the screen, go right eye, left eye, or both eyes. Again, we would adjust her acuity to whatever it was, and then we could do it binocularly as well. Uh, wherever the last line is that we pick would be uh, her acuity. And we can do it with letters, we can do it with numbers, tumbling E's or Landolt C's, as you can see. Once her, her unaided acuity is in, then we would want to bring in her lens meter readings. It shows up here. Here's her unaided acuities, lens meters here, and we would go through that routine again. Okay, now that we have the data in from the ancillary testing, we're going to go through the subjective. We're starting with the autorefractor data in as the subjective. And then as she would answer questions, we would do right eye first. And you would ask if she could read it and have to adjust the power according to her answers. And of course, there, we would pick sphere. Then we'd want to do the axis. And in the axis, we can utilize a split prism test. So this test indicates that this is the target she's looking at, and it's split. So there's two views of the same target at the same time. 
the Jackson cross cylinder, you'd have to do one and two, one and two. Here, we would merely ask which of the two is sharper. And assume she says two, so we would hit two. We go in the direction that this indicates, and that's changing our axis. Once we got to the point where they were, they, now we'd say go back to the right until we come to uh, the appropriate axis. We can change our uh, sensitivity to one degree, which is uh, extremely important with people who are sensitive to small axis changes. We get to our final answer. We go then to cylinder power. Again, it would be based on whether it's the right side or the left side is sharper. Let's say the right side is sharper. We would change the, ax the power of the cylinder. And then when we go back to finalize that prescription, we want to do a balance again, red and green. Let's assume that we end up right here. That's how we would do our subjective on the right eye. Then we would repeat the process on the left eye and do a binocular balance at the end, utilizing right eye, left eye changes, and we can change one eye at a time. Hold this down and change the right. There we go. Or I can hold this down and change the left. There we go. So we get the binocular balance, then we can finalize that as the prescription, I go back to our letters and get our final acuity If we had to make an adjustment at the end, we would do it there. So once we've finished our refraction, one of the things that's most important to do is show the patient the difference between what they've, they currently have as a prescription and what the new refraction will do for them. In the electronic version of a foropter, it's very quick and easy. It's a matter of showing them the LM version which is this is their version of, of their prescription is now in there and she can see what it looks like with that old prescription and then it's a matter of pushing the button and in a few seconds at the same level of acuity she can see the new the effect of the new prescription and we often think that the difference is too small to be important to a patient but when it's when it's quick like that they see the difference very well and often prescriptions that I wouldn't have thought would be significant to the patient turn out to be something they want to purchase. Now, if I was to do that to show her the difference utilizing a trial frame, I would have to take the time to find the lenses, put them in here, then we would have to pull her away show her this and then take that off and put this back. That's a much longer period of time from what it looks like through trial one to trial two versus I go from lens meter, now she's got her old prescription and now she has the new prescription. One of the nice things about digital foropters and, and the, the approach to refracting and, and giving care with these devices is that the test that I pick will adjust automatically the chart that goes with that test. So if I want to do a FOIA test, I know from the screen that the test that I want has changed the chart to the appropriate chart. So. In, in this case, it's put in the lenses, red and green. It's added the chart in there. And I'm gonna ask, are the vertical lines that you see lined up one over the other, or is the right, or, or is the bottom one to the right or to the left? And if there's an adjustment need, need to be made, I can do it here. As I, and this is going in half diopter steps, I can have it go in 0.1 diopter steps if I wanted to.
When I get the horizontals lined up, then I want to check is the vertical lined up. If the vertical has to be adjusted, it's, it's a matter of touching the screen and going up or down um, in one eye or both eyes. And of course, she doesn't have a foria, so I don't want to leave her with all that prism in there because it's not going to be very comfortable long term. So once that's done, I can move on to another test by merely touching the appropriate screen. Worth four dot, for example. And then I could test, again, the red and green are in there as it should be. And when I'm finished, I could just go back to a regular chart. Everything opens up and we can, we can go um, back to uh, where we want to be. The alternative to the split prism uh, astigmatism correction uh, is to utilize a Jackson cross cylinder. So there we hit this button and we have a choice of plus and minus a quarter or plus and minus a half to, um, for patients perhaps with low vision or don't, don't have a, a very significant just noticeable difference. So here it automatically sets itself up on, on axis and we can utilize these two buttons, here's number one, here's number two, to do the traditional Jackson cross cylinder, which is better one or two. If she says two, I can either go in that direction with the dial here and change my axis, or I can utilize these buttons, which will change it by this amount. And again, we can pick whether we want one or two, or one or five degrees and I can change it by the button, or I can change it with the dial, either one. And then once we've settled on the axis, go to cylinder. Again, it's the same as the cross cylinder we're familiar with. One, two, pick one, and adjust the power. And we'll do that for the right eye. We'll do that for the left eye in the same way. After we finish a su subjective, we may want to develop an ad, either for a younger patient with a accommodative or binocular problems, or for a presbyope. It's relatively easy to do. We select add, and then it will ask us to pick an age range, and it goes from 42 to 60, or you could say no if it's a young person and it will put no ad in. But let's assume it's a 42-year-old. I prefer the uh, cross-cylinder target as my near point um, ad, and I want those lenses to be binocular. So now we're set up. Depending on her um, answers to which is, which is darker, vertical or horizontal, we would make adjustments in the ad until we get them to balance. And then that would be uh, where we would stop. We could then go back to regular lenses and check her acuity through the ad by adjusting this target. There. And now we would do her acuities. So one of the things that's different with a ferropter that's manual is if we are going to put in the, the results of auto refraction, somebody has to physically change all these lenses to the numbers that go with the, with the results. So in this case, it's the only sphere, but we could potentially have to also do axis and cylinder in both eyes. So it takes a, quite a while to just set up the ferropter, a digital ferropter, it's a one button push, the information comes in, and uh, both for the lens meter as well as auto refractor. Here we have to decide what we're gonna start with. If I wanna now check the auto refractor results, then I would have to add additional lenses to match the results of the auto refractor. And if I want to go back to the lens meter, I have to take those back out. Again, on, on a digital system, it's all just a push of a button and all of that happens. Now, as we start to refract here, we would do a re retinoscopy or just start from the auto refractor. I also then would have to set the chart that I want. Close one eye. and then work on the other eye 
then goes switch again to the second eye, then both eyes together. So it's a lot of reaching up, the ergonomically, 30 years, 34 years of me doing this, you know, really took a toll on my shoulders and my back. Now, as you can see with the digital, you're, you're sitting comfortably the whole time. Some of the time I have to stand up here to, to make adjustments. And plus we're very close. So, you know, ergonomically for the patient as well as the doctor, a digital system gives you space that during COVID became a bigger deal than it, it was prior to that. But still, patients, you know, don't necessarily want you that close if you don't have to be. So there are many, many aspects of a digital foropter that we have seen uh, the difference with the manual foropter. So if we want to demonstrate to the patient what's the difference between the current glasses and the new prescription, in this case, her current glasses are minus 75 in both eyes, and I have to go to uh, plus a quarter in the left, minus one in each eye at 173 and 170. So that's all of that manipulation to get to the new prescription. And then if she wanted to go back and look at her old prescription again, then I have to do all of that again to get to her old prescription. And in the digital system, that's a one button push that takes seconds to accomplish. <music>